There we go. Go. Good afternoon. I'm Mike Petrie. And I'm Eli Fennell. I'll be the facilitator for this event. And on my right, I guess camera left, is Dr. Douglas Kellerman. Sneak in the picture here just a little bit. Dr. Kellerman has been working here for 15 years and uh, definitely a partner and a friend of, for many, many years. Excellent. Glad to have you here, Dr. Kellerman. I know you won't be able to hear me right now, but it's good to have you here. And this is Your Health Matters with Dr. Michael Petrie uh, of Petrie Chiropractic Life Center in Oakland Park, Florida. These folks have been in business for longer than I've been alive, and they've been right around the corner from me uh, for my entire life. I've known Dr. Petrie and his family for a very long time, and it's a great pleasure to, uh, to be able to have him on here and, and discuss some important issues related to health. Well, uh, thank you very much, Eli, and uh, I think I've known you since you were in high school, correct? Correct, yes, when I met your son, Brian, in high school. All right. But of course, I knew you by reputation. I'd seen your TV commercials, and I drove by your building or walked by it all the time. Well, we've been here 33 and a half years now, I believe. Wow, that's uh, I mean, and that's got to be uh, something to you know to keep a business like that afloat for for so long and and still be doing really really well and and still be really respected in the local community. Uh, basically do things right, take care of people, they refer to you, and you don't burn out a reputation, you create an, a reputation, and we've taken care of well over 20,000 patients from the local community here, some of them come from afar, but most of them are local, and uh, had a good time doing it, and we've helped a tremendous number of people. Well, that's, that's great, and that, of course, is, you know, the essence of being called to heal people is you just want to be able to help people. Uh, by the way, I think this is just a little more reminiscing. I believe when I was a kid, I played on the Petrie Chiropractic Little League team. So, <laughs> you guys. I've sponsored right. baseball teams and uh, soccer teams and many little teams over the years, and included some uh, bicycle racing teams from the Broward Wheelman Bicycle Club, and uh, you know, de dealt with professional soccer players and professional football players and official physician for the Miami Fusion Pro Soccer Team a few years back and as well as the Baltimore Orioles during spring training. We took care of a number of the players there. Okay, so quickly, could you give us just a little bit of your background, uh, you know, how you got into uh, medicine and where you went to school and all that? Well, chiropractic medicine has uh, been involved in my life uh, since before I was born. My, as I found out when I was interested in chiropractic career, that my mother had her life saved by a chiropractor when she was just a young child in the hospital. Hearing that story from my grandmother after I already had committed to become a chiropractor was definitely rewarding and a nice, my gosh, I must have made the right decision. And uh, so we find out from an aunt and uncle they've been going to a chiropractor, getting periodic maintenance care and staying healthy. And my mother, she was saved a couple times by uh, substantial intervention with the chiropractic were many times in medicine and drugs were not helping her. Her initial story was she had uh, pneumonia, was in the hospital before they had antibiotics uh, that were strong or powerful. And given up for dead, and then Dr. Baker up in Jack, uh, Jamestown, New York, said uh, was in the hospital leaving. My grandmother was there. She was already said that your mother may not make it. Uh, she probably won't make it. Call your husband. So she was going out of the hospital to get the husband, and she sees Dr. Baker, and he says, well, let me see if there's anything I can do. And he went in there, had her watch the door, because they would have thrown him in jail for practicing medicine without a license back then, being a chiropractor, and helped her. And she was breathing better. He said, as I get out of here, go ahead, call the nurses. The nurses came in later and said, my God, it's a miracle. Looks like she's going to make it. Obviously, she did. I'm here. <laughs> Oh, that is that is an amazing story, uh, and it's just amazing that you got into the same profession there before you'd even heard about that. Um, and I think you know that uh, it, it really goes to show that healing is is way more than what we often think of it as in the Western world, which is you know uh, call the doctor for the pills or the the surgery. Uh, so, being as the topic here is the essentials of a healthy lifestyle. 
and you've had decades of practice, what do you consider to be the essentials of a healthy lifestyle? Well, I think everybody needs to be active and uh, exercise and whatever level that is. If it's an elderly person in a chair moving around with some weights and kind of moving her arms up and stretching out and it might be a can of beans, it might be a, you know, just stretching their arms out, chair yoga is healthy. Get the body moving. So some people do some of these Chinese type of things and other types of sports and activities, but move it or lose it. You know, keep the body moving. It's important. Then it comes down to nutrition. Put good things into your body. You're going to get better things out. I try to lead the lifestyle that I encourage my patients to live. I've been bicycle riding and running, and uh, I've actually been a vegetarian. You don't have to be a vegetarian, but less meat would probably be better. And uh, the average person that's eating all kinds of white flours and gravies and salts and sugars, they need to reduce the bad things under their diet, make room for more of the things from the produce department. I think that's uh, absolutely a great point. It's, it's far too easy in this uh, society to you know just pull up to the Burger King or you know grab the, the microwave food. Uh, but what you're saying, of course, is that even though it might take a little more time or a little more effort to uh, have that good and balanced nutrition, that it's going to totally pay off in added quality and probably length of life as well, right? It was certainly a theory when I was in chiropractic college that eating better was healthier. I mean, it was a good theory. I think it's common sense theory. But, uh, you know, now it's been proven. They've demonstrated and had long-term studies on patients that were uh, reducing their amount of uh, fats and proteins from, like, animal proteins and going more to a vegetable-based diet that are living longer. And even a more cleaner diet than myself, such as a vegan, they're living longer than vegetarians. So eating healthy certainly pays off. The chemicals and pesticides and things that uh, go on our food probably are going into us. The hormones that they give the cows and uh, to help them, uh, you know, grow bigger and faster, and the antibiotics they're giving them to, you know, purify their milks and all that, get passed through the food chain to the uh, consum consumer, which is us. So we're getting the effects of all those hormones and antibiotics and chemicals, and the less we put in our body, the better we are. Absolutely. Um, I'm sure you uh, probably frequent places like Whole, Whole Foods to get uh, food that is without the pesticides and, and hormones, or at least has as little of those in it as possible. I do, and I look at the prices, and I kind of, you know, swallow hard and like, oh my gosh, how much better is this food for me, and how much can I afford? Um, I do shop in a lot of the local produce markets. Nowadays, we have three or four little local produce markets that, uh, and some of their things are organic, and uh, I shop around for some interesting things that are not commonly grown here. Um, I, I made a chili the other night with. Uh, you know, white beans and black beans and uh, cactus instead of sweet peppers. Well, the cactus had the same consistency and flavor, but it's not as mass-produced. It's not as fertilized. It's not as uh, sprayed with pesticides as some of these other foods, which they've hybridized and, and changed these foods over the years. Um, when you see such beautiful, big, bright vegetables, you kind of wonder, wow, they look like they're, you know, things that belong on a table for a, with a picture and a portrait around them. And if you go to an organic market, and I go to the Pompano um, market every once in a while on a Saturday mornings and some of these other local markets, some of the vegetables don't look as big. They don't look as uh, sometimes as healthy. And somebody jokingly said if you see insects, on vegetables, that's nature's way of, uh, the, that's nature's pesticides. They're basically uh, eating other little bugs and bacteria, and just make sure you clean those foods well before you eat them. And uh, when the food doesn't have anything with it, it's like, man, if, if the ant bugs don't want to eat it, should we? Hmm, that's an interesting theory there. If the bugs don't want to eat it, should we? That's, that's very true. Um, I, 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 remember the first time that I ever ate a, f a fresh garden grown tomato and it was the first time it actually clicked for me that a tomato was a fruit 
because it was just so loaded with flavor. It was so sweet and delicious, and the stuff stuff you get from the grocery store is very often kind of plastic by comparison uh, to what it should be. So yeah, I mean, it may be bigger and brighter, or whatever. Often they're using dyes to make it look brighter, uh, but is it healthier necessarily? We consume things and buy it based on the weight of it, and when they take two nice-sized tomatoes and try to breed them together to get big tomatoes and little tomatoes and big tomatoes, then they take the two bigger tomatoes and breed them together and get bigger tomatoes. We might have gotten more yield as far as weight, but we didn't necessarily get more nutrition. Nutrition is the, the vitamins and the minerals that really why we eat food and people haven't realized this yet, but a big reason, and this may be a, a, a unique theory of dietary uh, reason why pe so many people are overweight, but you have to consume more food to get more nutrients. And while the foods are producing greater and larger things, they are not necessarily more nutritious. They've done some studies where they go back and look at some of the foods that were produced in the 1920s and 1930s before they found out about how to hybridize, and this is not even talking about GMOs, you know, genetically modified organisms, but even just the hybridization and picking the biggest and best to breed those together, or the ones that the bugs won't eat, let's breed those together, really it doesn't have anything to do with nutritional value. So there's less and less good things within our fruits and vegetables, so therefore we have to eat more and more things to try to find the nutrition, and people don't have a sensor in their body for necessarily volume of food. We have some sensors, but we also have some sensors that say, hey, we need certain things. We crave certain things, not just the bad things that we crave, the ice creams, but we also crave certain amount of um, minerals and, and I'm trying to think of certain nutrients and vitamins that are in our foods, so we have to consume more of them trying to get those things and find those things. The five artificial vitamins they add into a white flour doesn't necessarily really truly make it enriched. We call it enriched flour, but they took out 20 or 30 natural nutrients when they got rid of the wheat germ out of the wheat, when they got rid of the bran and the fiber off of the thing, and they left us with just a little itty bitty uh, pulp of the grain that they grind it up, cook it, and bleach it, and then they add five artificial vitamins in. They took 20 out, put five in, call it enriched. Well, I, I suppose that somebody was enriched by doing that, but it certainly wasn't the person needing it. Yes, and it certainly bodes for better storage of these things because the, the wheat germ has like micro dots of oils and stuff like that in it. That uh, I'm sorry, my phone was going off and I didn't know how to tuck my ringer off, so now I can just let it go to the answering machine here. It's lunchtime at Petri Chiropractic. So uh, where were we at, Eli? I just kind uh, of forgot the question. Oil on the wheat germ. Right, and it would cause the flour to go bad a lot quicker. Well, you take white flour that you buy in a store, and it can sit around for years before it goes bad. Um, you know, just keep the any of the little pests from around the kitchen from getting into it, and it'll be good years and years later, whereas a, a whole wheat flour that actually has some of the, the oils and things will go bad. So then we get enticed by, hey, this stuff doesn't go bad. It's, it's, it's preservatives and all that. Well, sometimes those preservatives we want to try to avoid. Yeah, I got to figure anything that is preserving it, uh, you know, indefinitely against the ravages of time is probably something you don't want to be putting too much of in your own body. That's right. I'm going to uh, give this to Dr. Kellerman. I'd like you to interview him and ask him a question or two, and uh, we'll see how this goes. And I know that we can't hear what you're saying in between, but I will just imagine what the questions were when I hear him answering them here. Okay. <laughs> Hello, Eli. How are you? Hey, can you hear me? Dr. Kellerman, I can hear you just fine. Great, great. So tell everybody who you are. Hello, my name is Dr. Kellerman, and I work here with uh, Dr. Petrie. I've been down here now for about 13 or 14 years and moved down here from New York. was practicing in New York for three years and got tired of the cold and the snow, and especially this week, I really appreciate being down here. 
because I know they got slammed with some big snowstorms. <laughs> Yes, uh, sometimes life in the tropics is good. Oh, heck, who's kidding? Life in the tropics is always good. It's great. So all these and that actually allows us... I'm sorry, Eli, I didn't no, no, interrupt, interrupt you. But that, on, on the lines of our topic right here, and that, uh, that falls into actually being able to have a healthier lifestyle, being outdoors more often, getting the exercise that you need, a, a good balance, being out, getting the exercise, doing your stretching, eating healthy, and it's a, it's a great place to be to have a good lifestyle. Uh, that's true. A lot of people may not know the Fort Lauderdale area came into existence be, uh, really in part because Frank Stranahan, who uh, basically made this whole area possible, his wife, I believe it was, was suffering from consumption, and her doctor told her move to Florida. And at first that was northern Florida, but of course over time he moved down and, uh, and developed this area as well. Uh, it, is, it is great to, for being able to live an active lifestyle. I know in places where it gets extremely cold, it must be hard to get up and jog on a cold morning in the middle of winter. Yes. So all these years you've been uh, practicing, if there was something that people were doing, you know, that was bad for their health, that really grinds your gear, like the one or two things that you would say, just just stop doing these things and you'll be healthier and live a better life, what would those be? Well, as we were talking about, movement, exercise. A lot of people get into habits, and breaking these habits are very difficult, but once they start doing it and start doing some healthy habits, they become normal and a good thing for them. So what happens is just getting somebody to move, having someone with an arthritic wrist or arthritic knee or, or arthritic back, the movement alone s increases the circulation, brings better blood supply, allows inflammation to decrease, and gives the person less stiffness, less achiness. So that would be a big thing, is if I can get people to move a little bit more, be more active, that's a lot of the solutions right there. Uh, you know, people always say they're going to do it, though. I mean, here we are, you know, it, it's February, and I'm sure 98% mm. of people's New Year's resolutions to live more active lifestyles have been broken. Um, what, how do you get somebody to do that, you know, who hasn't been willing to do it for themselves? Is there a way to yeah. do it? Well, the most important thing first is to set realistic goals for yourself. Okay, you're not going to have an 85-year-old person run a marathon. But what happens is if you set realistic goals and, and start working towards those goals and also working with friends and, and people that you, you know so that it becomes a group effort and you, you can each motivate each other and you're doing something good for each other. You're actually helping somebody. And instead of asking them, hey, let's go out for a big lunch. Let's go out for dinner. You should say, hey, let's go out for a walk tonight. You know, let's do something that's good for us. And let's do something that's going to make us feel healthier, be healthier, and look healthier. So it's, it's the people you surround yourself with to help you with the motivation. And, and talking into yourself to say, hey, I can feel better. And then once you start feeling better, it becomes like an addiction. So it, it feels good to feel good, so you want to do more of it. I know exactly how you feel. Uh, you know, when you do start, you know, to be more active, be more physically fit, uh, it starts to feel really good. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, at the, at the risk of sounding cliche here, this is it's nature's way of, of rewarding you by basically making you a little bit high on your body's own chemicals, your endorphins and endorphins things like that. Endorphins and keflons, correct. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and but it's unlike other drugs that people might use to kind of simulate this effect. It ha is the one thing that has essentially no drawbacks uh, outside There's of maybe no side rare effects, cases. and it's not bad for you. <laughs> and and it's not against any laws anywhere. Exactly. Uh, I would hate to live in the place where exercise was against the law. So uh, is anything um, else besides like? Uh, people not exercising enough, like one thing that people do that you just, just drives you crazy because you know that, that you would not have to deal with a lot of problems if they would just not do it. Well, it's not that I wouldn't have to deal with the problems. There's one thing that, that, that gets to me too. I have a lot of people that come in here and say, I hurt myself, but you know what? 
I thought it would go away, and here we are four, five, six months down the line. If people would address the problem rapidly, quickly, the likelihood of it responding quickly and resolving is high. But what happens is a lot of people wait and think that things are going to go away. Yeah, you need to act be, now. Yeah, people can be really stubborn about that. Uh, you know, I almost lost. Uh, almost lost my own father at one point because uh, it was a, a heart a heart attack, and you know he didn't didn't respond right away, which is exactly what you're supposed to do. Uh, by the way, I have a question from Tim Sleppy. He asks, "Are supplements worthwhile?" Supplements are worthwhile. Um, there's many different supplements out there, and what happens is is that some of them are more bioavailable than others, depends how you take them. For example, a lot of people believe, hey, let me drink milk, get a lot of calcium, okay? When actually there's more calcium that you can absorb through your body when you eat broccoli. So what happens is it's important to know what you're eating, how to intake things, and what you're trying to accomplish by taking supplements. So yes, supplements are good, in certain situations, it's important to know which ones you're taking and what's the purpose of taking that supplement. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, when I was a vegetarian like Dr. Petrie, uh, one thing that I knew that you had to do, but I met vegetarians all the time who, who didn't know this, was, was B12 supplements uh, mm -hmm. because your body doesn't really generally produce those on its own, so you have to take supplements. Um, and I met a lot of them, unfortunately, who, who didn't know that, and very often you could see that they were unhealthy, uh, that, that <clears throat> they weren't maintaining a, a balanced diet, and they weren't taking the, the additional supplements they needed. Uh, so, obviously, you got to, like you said, you got to know what it is you're trying to achieve, and uh, even, you know, have some knowledge of what your body needs, what it may be deficient in uh, from, from its diet or its lifestyle. Correct. Just on the same wavelength as we were saying, a lot of people will take a calcium supplement, but they don't know it has to be in a two-to-one ratio with a magnesium. If they don't, it's not absorbed through your body. So these are just little things that are important to ask and find out about. Otherwise, you're wasting your money on supplements, and you're better off just going to the food and getting it through your food. Excellent. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Kellerman. I appreciate your time, and thanks for the opportunity. And I appreciate having you on. All right. I'll give you back to Dr. Petrie. Thank you. Yep. Well, I think I understood what you were talking about the whole time. <laughs> yeah. At one point, uh, I asked a question from the audience, so I don't know if you caught that. Uh, that was what brought up the supplements issue. Uh, so is, is there anything else that you would like to add before we close out this first episode of Your Health Matters? Chiropractic first, medicine second, avoid surgery because that's last. And so many of our cases have been basically told they needed surgery and we've worked with them and turned them around and got them back where they didn't need surgery. Surgery has such an iffy success rate. Let's work on something. Do it natural, pretty much like we'd like your diet and your health care and your lifestyle. Be as natural as possible. You live longer, healthier, more energetic and active lives. Excellent, excellent. That's good. That that's a very good point about you know uh, doing the things that are necessary to avoid getting to the point where you might have to to take risky uh, treatments like certain drugs or surgery that may be dangerous or not even work. So I'd like to thank you for leaving us off on that point. Uh, this has been Your Health Matters, hosted by Petrie Chiropractic Life Center. I am your facilitator, Eli Fennell. And I'd like to thank uh, Drs. Michael Petrie and Douglas Kellerman for joining us and sharing their insight. And we'll do this again soon. Thank you, Eli. We'll see you around. Thank you. Have a good day. <laughs>